We're going to take a look at the Merklin HO scale C track double slip switch. It comes complete with the electric mechanism, the turnout motor, and a lighted turnout lantern. In the box, you'll find obviously the double slip switch, little instruction booklet, and a set of plugs yellow, red, and green for the turnout motor, and then a yellow and brown for the light. The, on the bottom you can see the turnout lantern right there. And you'll also see the turnout motor. It's already pre-installed on this turnout. I'll undo the wires. All right, so we have the brown and yellow for our light circuit. And then there's the three wires that go to the turnout mechanism. And they are in the standard yellow and the double blue for the two solenoids. And remember to stick with Merklin, you do the yellow for the return. And then one of the blue wires gets the red plug and the other blue wire gets the green plug. We always use green for the turnout set to straight and red for the turnout set to curved. That will be straight, going straight across. And now you can see that the turnout is set to curved and the train approaching would curve along and take the other exit. And one more time, the straight version. The train approaching would cross straight across the crossing. So straight out of the box, this turnout is ready to be installed in your layout. You hook up the yellow and brown to your light circuit and the other three wires from the turnout motor to one of your turnout controllers, like a 72710. But we're going to show you now how to, you can upgrade or digitize this um, crossing with a 74462 turnout decoder. This decoder fits underneath the track piece just like the motor does. And inside the box you'll find the instructions, instruction booklet, warranty papers, and then the decoder in a static free bag, plus a few wires and the two labels where you can put a digital number on the decoder itself. In the booklet we can switch to the English language, if I can find it right there. And it will have some of the basic instructions and important information. But what is more interesting or more useful will be the wiring instructions, which are here in different languages. Let's find English, uh, French, sorry. There it is, German and English. And here you see how you could uh, wire if you're using Trix C-Track. For that there's a special little cable and also how you can wire this setup if you have a separate power supply for your solenoids. And then the other important thing in the booklet that you have to use at least once is how to set the digital address for the decoder, including tables with all the decoder or the dip switch settings if you want a certain address. For example, if I decide to give the decoder address number 16, I can see that dip switch number five need to be slid to the on position and all the other dip switches stay off. And the dip switch you will find on the bottom side of the decoder, right? Well, it's under my thumb right now. So, we'll open up the bag. Don't do this on your shack carpet when you're all staticky. There's a set of labels, your little wire for use with Trix C-Track, 
and that's the power wire that needs to plug into the decoder. Here's the decoder itself with the set of dip switches and they're numbered 1 through 10 and then on the top it says the little word on and that tells you that if you slide them up they are in the on position. Now we're going to plug in this power wire and one side is not smooth. I have it to the top right now and it will not fit if you try to push it in that way. So don't force it but make sure that you have the smooth side up and then it should clip right in. Push it in position and you're set. A similar style plug, the green plug, is used to go to the turnout motor and we're going to have to pull out the old set of wires, the double blue and yellow, first. So just grab on to the wires and give it a nice steady pull and it will come out. Then we get this plug and again it can only go in one way. And I'm having a hard time trying to align it here looking at the video screen, but almost. There, I got it. It's in place, but now I need to, with my fingernail, push it all the way in so that it's all the way flush. There. So that's the three wires that go from the decoder to the turnout motor. And now I have to power the decoder. Since we don't have a separate power circuit, we will also connect the yellow wire to the turnout and simply use digital power to switch the turnout. So the yellow goes on that separate tab on the left-hand side. And then all you have left is the brown that goes to the outer rail and the red wire that goes also to the center rail. So I'll connect the red to the center rail connector. Again, the left side. And you can see that's connected to the center rail if you follow the little silver line. And the brown one goes to the outer rail. So I'll slide it on there. And that's it for our electrical connections. Yellow power from the center rail, red from the center rail, and then finally brown for the outer rail. Now we can put the decoder in place and it is simply held in position with three little push pins. So we align the holes, and that's the wrong hole. That won't work, so I need to get that little hole. And now all three holes should line up or all three pins should line up with the holes and the decoder clicks in place. One there, one pin right there and the last one right there. And that's sufficient to hold the decoder in place when you install it on your layout. Now what remains is to set the digital address on the dip switches, an address of your choice, and then you can take the little label, write the number on there and stick it on the decoder. This wire is no longer needed, so it can go in your parts bin. The Trix wire is not needed. And last but not least, the plugs are not needed, but again, very handy to have in your parts bin. And that concludes how to digitize the turnout, the 24624. Finally, you write the number on the label and stick it right there. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.